how long then? Asked the student. Uh, thirty years, replied the master. <laughs> but I do not understand, said the disappointed student. At each time that I say I will work harder, you say that it will take me longer. Why do you say that? Replied the master, when you have one eye on the goal, you only have one eye on the path. This is the dilemma that I face within the American public education system. We are so focused on a goal, whether it be passing a test or graduating as first in the class. However, in this way, we do not really learn at our fullest. We do whatever it takes to achieve our original objective. Some of you may be thinking, well, if you pass a test or become valedictorian, didn't you learn something? Well, yes, you learned something, but not all that you could have. Perhaps you only learned how to memorize names, places, and dates to later on forget to, in order to clear your mind for the next test. School is not all that it can be. Right now, it's a place for most people to determine that their goal out is to get out as soon as possible. I'm now accomplishing that goal. I am graduating. I should look at this as a positive experience, especially being at the top of my class. However, in retrospect, I cannot say that I'm any more intelligent than my peers. I can attest that I'm only the best at doing what I'm told. I, um, yet here I stand, and I'm supposed to be proud that I have completed this period of indoctrination. I will leave in the fall, and I will go on to the next phase expected of me in order to receive a paper document that certifies that I'm capable of work. But I can test that I'm a human being, not just a worker. I'm a thinker, an adventurer. A worker is someone who is trapped within repetition, a slave of the system set up before him. But now I have successfully shown that I was the best slave. I did what I was told to the extreme. While others sat in class and doodled to later become great artists, I sat in class to take notes to become a great test taker. While others would come to class without their homework done because they were reading about an interest of theirs, I never missed an assignment. While others were creating music and writing lyrics, I decided to do extra credit, even, I, even though I didn't even need it. So I wonder, why did I even want this position? Sure, I earned it, but what will come of it? When I leave educational institutionalism, will I be successful or forever lost? I have no clue about what I want to do with my life. I have no interest because I saw every subject as a study as work, and I excelled at every subject just for the purpose of excelling and not learning. And quite frankly, I'm very scared. John Teller Gatto, a retired school teacher and activist critical of compulsory schooling, asserts, we could encourage the best qualities of youthfulness, curiosity, adventure, resilience, the capacity for surprising insight simply by being more flexible about time, texts, and tests, by introducing kids into tr truly competent adults, and by giving each student what autonomy he or she needs in order to take a risk every now and then. But we don't do that. Between these cinder block walls, we are all expected to be the same. We are trained to ace every standardized test, and those who deviate and see light through a different lens are worthless to the scheme of public education, and therefore viewed with contempt. H.L. Mencken wrote in the American Mercury for April 1924 that the aim of public education is not to fill the young of this species with knowledge and awaken their intelligence. Nothing could be further from the truth. The aim is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level to breed and train a standardized citizenry, to put down dissent and originality. That is the aim in the United States. To illustrate this idea, doesn't it perturb you to learn about the idea of critical thinking? Is there really such a thing as uncritically thinking? To think is to process information in order to form an opinion. But if we are not critical when processing this information, are we really thinking? Or are we mindlessly accepting other opinions as truth? This was happening to me, and if it wasn't for the rare occurrence of an avant-garde 10th grade English teacher, Donna Bryan, I would have been doomed. I am now enlightened, but my mind still feels disabled. I must retrain myself and constantly remember how insane this ostensibly sane place really is. And now here I am in a world guided by fear, a world suppressing the uniqueness that lies inside each of us, a world where we can either acquiesce to the inhuman nonsense of corporatism and materialism or insist on change. 
We are not enlivened by an educational in system that clandestinely sets us up for jobs that could be automated, for work that need not be done, for enslavement, enslavement without fervency for meaningful achievement. We have no choices in life when money is our motivational force. Our motivational force ought to be passion, but this is lost from the moment we step into a system that trains us rather than inspires us. We are more than robotic bookshelves, conditioned to blurt out facts we were taught in school. We are all very special. Every human on this planet is very special. So aren't we all deserving of something better? Of using our minds for innovation rather than memorization, for creativity rather than futile activity, for rumination rather than stagnation. We are not here to get a degree to then get a job so we can consume industry approved application after application. There is more and more still. The saddest part is that the majority of students don't have the opportunity to reflect as I did. The majority of students are put through the same brainwashing techniques in order to create a complacent labor force working in the interests of large corporations and secretive government. And worst of all, they are completely unaware of it. I will never be able to turn back these 18 years. I can't run away to another country with a different education system, perhaps meant to enlighten rather than condition. <coughs> this part of my life is over, and I want to make sure that no other child will have his or her potential suppressed by powers meant to exploit and control. We are human beings. We are thinkers, dreamers, explorers, artists, writers, engineers. We are anything we want to be, but only if we have an educational system that supports us rather than holds us down. A tree can grow, but only if its roots are given a healthy foundation. For those of you out there that must continue to sit in desks and yield to the author authoritarian ideologies of instructors, do not be disheartened. You still have the opportunity to stand up, ask questions, be critical, and create your own perspective. Demand a setting that will provide you with intellectual capabilities that allow you to expand your mind instead of directing it. Demand that you be interested in class. Demand that the excuse, you have to learn this for the test, is not good enough for you. Education is an excellent tool if used properly, but focus more on learning rather than getting good grades. For those of you that work within the system that I am condemning, I do not mean to insult. I intend to motivate. You have the power to change the incompetencies of the system. I know that you did not become a teacher or an administrator to see your students bored. You cannot accept the authority of the governing bodies that tell you what to teach, how to teach, and that you will be punished if you do not comply. Our potential is at stake. For those of you that are now leaving this establishment, I say, do not forget what went on in these classrooms. Do not abandon those that come after you. We are the new future, and we are not going to let tradition stand. We will break down the walls of corruption to let a garden of knowledge grow throughout America. Once educated properly, we will be cultivated and wise. We will have the power to do anything, and best of all, we will use that power for only good. We will not accept anything at face value. We will ask questions, and we will demand truth. So here I stand. I'm not standing here as valedictorian by myself. I was molded by my environment, by all my peers who are sitting here behind me. I couldn't have accomplished this without all of you. It was all of you who truly made me the person I am today. It was all of you who were my competition, yet my backbone. In that way, we are all valedictorians. I am now supposed to say farewell to this institution, those who maintain it, and those who stand with me and behind me, but I hope this farewell is more of a see you later, when we are all working together to rear a pedagogic movement. But first, let's go get those pieces of paper that tell us that we're smart enough to do so. <laughs>